just by way of introduction, the company is a global company dedicated to uh, everything to do with the automotive electronics, and specifically the networks inside of the vehicle. Uh, we've made a wide variety of different products. We have different product families. And today, for this presentation, uh, we're going to be focusing on sort of the future of what's happening in SDV and looking under the hood uh, and how things are changing uh, relative to uh, networks that are being used, specifically uh, the transition away from traditional networks like CAN, LIN, FlexRate, and move towards automotive ethernet, as well as uh, data logging and specifically uh, analytics. So data logging and getting data is, is not useful if you don't use the data. So really uh, getting information and using the data with uh, flexible analytics would be the main focus for today. So let's look a little bit under the hood and talk about the technology used uh, for SVB. Uh, so, so in the past 30 years, we've had uh, vehicles that, uh, as everyone knows, electrical content has been increasing. And uh, the architecture in the vehicle is kind of designed around specific features of the vehicle. What we call this domain architecture, meaning you might have a network designed and specifically focused on support for powertrain, another one that's for lighting, another one that's for uh, heating and cooling. And what's happened over the years is that the overlap networks on top of each other makes the wiring harness more complex, more weight. And so the industry itself is just moving away from that paradigm and moving towards uh, a new paradigm that supports SDB much better, and that is a Zola architecture. And in Zola architecture, uh, you're grouping electronics in the vehicle, not based on the function that that uh, set of electronics provides, but rather based on location in the vehicle. And so what this does is, is you're gonna see uh, actuators and sensors network together that, you know, some that perform lighting, some that perform HVAC, uh, and some, some that do other features all on top of the same network grouped together in the same location. And one of the big advantages of this is that uh, it reduces uh, the number of ECUs in the vehicle, reduces the complexity of the wiring harness, which is one of the most uh, complex and expensive uh, components in the vehicle. And uh, also the, the big reason for this is that it supports, an it's an architecture that supports uh, software defined vehicles. And the reason is, is because in this architecture, what, what we're gonna do is we're going to reduce uh, the amount of ECUs. We're taking away what used to be 50, 100 different ECUs with different functionality, different decision-making, different software, and a lot of different pieces of hardware, a lot of different electronic control units. And as much as possible, combine all of those decision-making powers, all of the software into a single piece of hardware. And let's call that piece of hardware a central compute module. And that one single piece of hardware with as much capability to control the vehicle as possible. And so this is a platform where OEMs then have more control and more uh, ease uh, of deploying new software features in the sense that uh, you have just one piece of hardware to update for a lot of uh, functionality. Whereas in today's world, you have, might have, if you want to update features for powertrain, you might have to update five, six, ten different electronic control units. So in the future, this is the this is where we're this is where the industry is already pushing towards, and it has some serious implications on uh, fleet logging and uh, engineering uh, logging as well as analytics. So this is just another view of the same thing. Uh, you can see that uh, in, in the current world, we have domain architectures where you know, a network and ECU is dedicated to powertrain, uh, body, climate, a whole bunch of other features in the vehicle. And as much as possible in the future, we're going to move towards uh, zonal, where you have a central compute, and as much as possible have dumb actuators and sensors on the end. So really, what we're what, another thing that we're doing with uh, a zonal architecture supporting SDV is uh, there's going to be a lot more remote control of actuators and sensors in the vehicle. That means the decisions are going to be made in the central compute module, but then whatever control input and output has to be crossed across the entire network. So sensors and actuators that are in the front of the vehicle, let's say a, a light on the front of the vehicle, it's going to uh, transfer data from the, from the uh, light bulb all the way to the central compute. Central compute's going to process that information and transfer back control information. So really what this means is the we're sort of trading off complexity of hardware. We're trying to reduce the complexity of hardware, reduce the number of ECUs, 
reduce the complexity of the wiring harness. The trade-off is the complexity of the software, the complexity of the network specifically is going to be increased by orders of magnitude. So there's gonna be a lot more protocols, a lot more uh, data on top of the single network than what we see today with domain architectures. So the trade-off is reduce complexity in hardware, reduce cost in hardware, reduce weight of the vehicle, and uh, uh, the trade-off is a lot more complexity in, in uh, uh, software interaction inside the simple compute model, module and then a lot more complexity on the networks involved uh, in the vehicle. So uh, just by way of illustration, I made some calculations of uh, kind of just a, a, a little uh, quick calculation what a, what, a, what a typical domain architecture might be. You can see the calculations there. Uh, four flex rate networks at five megabits per second, 12 CANFD networks. These are sort of legacy networks that have been around for a long time. Uh, let's just assume it's all at 70% bus load. And then uh, it's total uh, vehicle aggregate network bandwidth about 30 mega megabits. Uh, per second. In, in a zone architecture, what, I, what we're seeing typical from OEMs is uh, at least uh, uh, 10 or 8, 8 or so uh, 100 base T1 networks, 24, uh, 10 base T1 networks, that's 10 megabit Ethernet. Uh, so we got 100 megabit Ethernet, uh, 10 megabit Ethernet, and let's just say 1, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. So one thing that, that we're also going to see in, in the zonal, the, from the domain to the zonal uh, transition is that Ethernet's gonna be a lot more dominant. And the reason why Ethernet's gonna be a lot more dominant is Ethernet is the only automotive grade type of network that is existing that supports the higher bandwidths. So if you look at legacy networks, you have CAN, FD, for example, you can make an argument that's somewhere between five and 10 megabit per second bandwidth aggregate. Uh, and Ethernet, it goes from all the way to low end 10 megabit in the Ethernet family of networks. It goes all the way from the low end of 10 megabit all the way up to 10 gigabits per second. And the industry is working on 25 gigabits per second right now as well. So we're going to see a lot more data. Uh, and, and Ethernet is the network of the, of the near future for sure. We're going to see a lot of transition towards that. And so let's just make some calculations. Assume that we have eight. 100 megabit Ethernet networks, 24 10 megabit Ethernet networks, and one 2.5 gig. This is pretty typical of what we're seeing with the zonal architecture. And let's just say at the start, it's only 25% bus load. So a lot of, there's a lot of over uh, uh, provisioning for the Ethernet networks at the start. And this is just the base of where we're going to start now, and it's going to increase in the future. So let's just, let's just assume a conservative 25% bus load on each network. So that means 625 megabits per second. So if we look at, you know, another way of looking at this is, you know, that little dot represents the uh, 30 megabits per second, and this big, uh, you know, black block blob looks uh, represents the 625. That's a 2,000 percent increase in in payload uh, from one architecture to the next. So this is something that we're going to have to deal with as we move for forward. So another way to say it, this is your trouble now, and this is your trouble soon. When we talk about data logging, when we talk about uh, fleet logging, and when we talk about analytics. So, uh, so in the near future, collecting all serial data, like uh, some, uh, some uh, OEMs do today, is going to be very expensive because to collect the amount of data that's going to be on automotive Ethernet networks, it's, it's, it's going to be a lot of storage and a lot of data. So that's just not possible. Uh, and even if you had all the data, let's say that you collect all the data, you're going to have terabytes of data per hour and what are you going to do with that data? Uh, what computer is going to store that data? And what computer is going to process that data? Uh, and this information does not even include higher speed networks that are in vehicles now, like camera data. Camera data, I'm not even including that information. All I'm doing is including the basic control information inside the vehicle. And we included cameras and, and serializers, deserializers, audio data. Uh, then, then this calculation will be orders of magnitude even larger. So uh, the challenges that we're going to face for analytics, logging, fleet logging in the future is that there'll be much more data. Uh, first of all, there'll be much more data than compared to uh, networks today. Uh, and the data itself, uh, if you think about what is an STV vehicle, an STV vehicle is software-defined vehicle, but, but what does it mean to be a software-defined vehicle? Software-defined vehicle, one thing that a uh, major feature is that, the, the intent is that you can have uh, software updates post-production. 
So what that means is, is that the data itself is going to be changing more rapidly. Whereas in a traditional type of architecture, you release the vehicle and the data on top of the network is fixed. And, and when you're doing data logging or fleet analytics, the source of the data, the parameters that are on the network don't change over the life of the vehicle. That's our sort of existence now. But in the SDV world, because we're able to update features, change control features, remove them, that also means that the parameters and the data on the network itself is going to change. So when we talk about analytics, uh, the flexibility of SDV vehicles means the analytics is also in the future going to need to be flexible as well. So what's the solution? So in Intrepid Controls, we're developing a whole end-to-end -end system for uh, engineering, uh, fleet data logging, for testing and validation of vehicles, as well as post-production uh, analytics where you can do more post-production type of things. Like for example, if you deploy an SDV a new feature in your vehicle in, that, in, that, in the SDV or, uh, world after production, is anybody using the feature? Is it working right? Is it not working right? Do certain regions you know, love the feature and other regions don't? Why? Uh, so all of these questions uh, need to be answered. And uh, in order to have good analytics in the future, it has to be very flexible and deployable uh, remotely and very uh, easy to deploy either without software code changes. So uh, the objectives that we have for our systems that we sell uh, for vehicles is, uh, is visualization of analytics of data where a customer can modify the parameters that, they're, that they uh, are requiring. So one day you might be looking at something simple, engine speed, temperatures, and the next day you can look at something completely different based on what feature you're focused on or what new feature you've deployed. And uh, be able to modify those parameters that you're reporting uh, remotely so you can deploy that across the, across the globe uh, remotely without source code changes. So you don't need to change any source code in any of your vehicle. Uh, you just have a configuration user interface where you specify what you want to uh, record. And then on the analytics side, the same thing. The user interfaces that you're going to be looking at, whether it's a, you know, a plot or a, you know, statistics uh, chart, uh, we can modify those with our system, or you can modify those with, uh, with our system with no source code changes. So what's typical today is that with analytics, a customer might hire us and say, we want X, Y, Z. And then, uh, you know, in the past, we would, we would hard code that, give them X, Y, Z. But in, in the future world, that's not flexible enough. You don't want to have to go back to software developers every time you want different analytics. And so that's the uh, design goal of our new system is uh, to be able to, to, to put the power in the user's hands to reconfigure not only what they look at from analytics in the cloud standpoint, but also reconfigure what they what they acquire in, in, in the multiple vehicles that they have um, uh, without any need for source code changes. So as I mentioned, one of the advantages of, is our company is that we have a system that works well for engineering data. In this case, uh, you might want to put a hardware inside of the vehicle specifically for data logging. So we, we sell a, a large a variety of different uh, high-end data loggers where you can collect a lot of data, upload them to the cloud, or even remove the data uh, locally. And uh, this is more for engineering pre-production test fleets. And that same system with the same user interfaces then can also be transitioned into more production type of data logging where you get, we're going to have less data, but a, large, lar a lot larger uh, fleet of vehicles, a lot larger number of vehicles that you're collecting from. So uh, our system is flexible both for the pre-production vehicles as well as post-production uh, in the SDV world. This is going to be uh, very important so that you can monitor and make sure that the features that you're deploying in the vehicle are actually getting used the way you expect them to be used or that they're functioning the way you expect them to function. So as I mentioned, uh, one of the key features of this is going to be uh, the reduction of data. So as I mentioned already, it's very clear that the amount of data in an SDV vehicle in the near future, you're not going to be able to collect all the data on the network. That's impossible. So you need some kind of software or hardware or, or features in the vehicle that can, can take a large amount of data with, with your input. Uh, you specify how you want the data to be reduced, what specific parameters you want, at which rates. You will reduce that uh, in a way where it then becomes presentable and even the presentation of the data is completely flexible. So this is just one example 
of a user interface that you can configure uh, with our system. And again, I emphasize again, you can figure it yourself with no source code changes. You don't have to come to us to do that. I just want to give one example of this uh, that, that, that was a, a successful deployment of, this, of uh, the first customer of this system was uh, electric truck manufacturer. And they were manufacturing uh, electric trucks for local delivery within a certain, a certain range. And they had to prove to their fleet customers, their, their uh, customers that use the trucks, that the electric system overall maintenance, uh, fuel cost, or uh, you know, cost of the vehicle is going to be less than compared to the existing fleet of vehicles that they were using, which was based on diesel, uh, you know, diesel trucks. So in this particular case, the the the, the, the key performance indicator would be what is the cost of fuel for diesel of these trucks, the maintenance of the diesel trucks versus the uh, electric trucks. And so in this case, we. Uh, uh, deployed data loggers to, to monitor uh, charging times, how much does it cost for the charge, uh, you know, elect electricity, how much it costs for electricity, the timing, and uh, we could even dig down into which drivers were the best drivers, which drivers were the most effective. You know, in, in a vehicle where you're actually paying the drivers, uh, you know, you can do this. You wouldn't do this for, uh, you know, someone that's not actually getting paid to drive the car, but uh, in this particular case, we can even monitor uh, which drivers were doing better and the driving patterns that could even save uh, costs. And this is something that's typical that's done with uh, fleet, uh, a lot of different fleet vehicles. But, but uh, and in addition, uh, if you have, if you're logging data already, then you also want to log uh, parameters like diagnostic trouble codes, like what, what problems happen in the vehicles, why, and so forth. And important to emphasize is that uh, the data that we were collecting, of course, we're connected to the cloud, the data is coming in in real time. So as the data comes in, we're updating all of the user interfaces, all of the analytics uh, as, uh, as the data comes in. So basically within a few minutes to a half an hour, uh, you can just look at your analytics, your dashboard, you call them dashboards, uh, for all the key uh, performance indicators that you're looking at. And you got real time data, so in the future, if you deploy a new software feature for SDV vehicles, uh, that means you can get immediate feedback as soon as the deployment happens. You don't have to wait a, a period of time for uh, data collection and then uh, analytics. So everything happens, processes in, in pseudo uh, real time. So in summary, the future with SDV is about flexible features in the vehicle. It's about new features, deploying new features, post-production. And if you want to make sure that those features are the right ones to be in use directly, you're going to have to record some data to make sure that, that that is in fact the case. And in order to do that, you're going to have to have a more flexible analytics and data logging system than what uh, is traditionally being deployed. Additionally, the challenge is going to be the data on the networks for SDV vehicles is going to be a lot higher than what you're, than what you're accustomed to today. And uh, Intrepid Control Systems is focused on these uh, challenges and uh, we provide solutions to them. So if you're interested in talking to me further, I'd love to uh, hear from you. Our booth is right there, uh, Intrepid Control Systems, and uh, I really appreciate you being here. Uh, thank you for your time.